relations with dance first and you would bring us through this this emotional uh the emotional life of Samuel which is not what most would anticipate but this one is more of the emotional and the closeness with women starting with his mother well that, that seems like a good place to start for most people in a way um but yes I mean what's surprising about Samuel Beckett if you you know he's an author that sort of has a lot of cliches around him if you like and and his work is quite minimalist and quite stripped down and not a lot, a lot happens in his work you know waiting for Godot is the one that most people know either directly or indirectly and you know, most people know about that play is that nothing happens twice basically on two days and but his life is absolutely full of incident and drama and episodes and and you know, sort of tormented love affairs, and he was in the French Resistance, and he was stabbed by a pimp for no reason. So you know, his work is there, but his life is full of drama. So his life story is surprisingly rich uh, in a ways you aren't expecting when you think about his work, and also the kind of later Beckett, you know, who lives in Paris, who's very intellectual and writes in French, and on and on. So that was that was I found firstly quite intriguing was this sort of this very rich, very dramatic life with the work being very sort of self-contained and very dry. So that was intriguing. And and the film really is focused on his life, not his work. Uh, for, so for those who find Beckett's work daunting, as I did, that might be quite a good, a good thing to know. You know, it was kind of fun to see Suzanne being there with him and they're being there and encouraging him. And it makes you wonder what if Suzanne hadn't been around at the right at, at the time and place to encourage him to continue? Well, indeed, that's something that he himself acknowledged, you know, that that she was a really important force in his life and his work. She really when he when no one wanted to read what he was doing, she was actively trying to, you know, get his work to publishers, support it. So she was a big part of his sort of literary success, if you like, because she believed in him and she always did, even if they had a very difficult marriage. And as you see in the film, it gets quite complicated uh, when he gets entangled with a mistress and he was, wasn't was always faithful to her. And so that complication is part of the, you know, the sort of drama of the story. But she's a really interesting character in her own right. And we had the great... Sort of, I had the great privilege of of working with Sandrine Bonner, who's a a very brilliant French actress who I was dying to work with. I I thought there's no way she'll want to do this, but I might as well try. And she did, did want to do it, and so that was very helpful to me to have such a great actress who I'd long admired. Because she's not so well known in international cinema, but she's very well known in France, and she's made some films that you know certain people will know. I think in America as well. Um, that was a great choice to have her playing, uh, you know, the other major character in the story, which is, as you say, Suzanne, his his wife. But I enjoyed the dialogue and the words used. And, and he's like, well, I like to call it magically mad, a magical yeah. package. So I, I found a little bit of a little wit around the film, which I found that very, very creative in the writing. Yeah, so I think it was it, you know, the thing about Beckett. Most people, it, it, some of it's quite funny. You know, when when his plays are staged correctly, particularly with Irish actors, they can be quite funny. But he's not known to be a barrel of laughs. But actually, I think the script is a kind of lighter, more playful sort of undertaking than you might expect for the life of Samuel Beckett. It's not supposed to be a a serious, earnest sort of account of his literary achievements. It's a playful account of a very dramatic life which you don't really expect to find in the writer of his, of the kind of work that he he created. Now tell me about doing the film and, and black and white until La Fine, the where we have some color. Yes, well, that was, um, that was a choice sort of influenced by two or three things. Um, firstly, the world of Beckett, certainly the, the received images of Beckett you have are all black and white. One of the major influences I had as a, when I was thinking about the film was a photographer called Brashai who was a Hungarian photographer who shot in photographs in Paris in the 30s and 40s, our kind of main time period. And so I, I started modelling the film on these photographs because they are Paris in the time that Beckett lived there. We shot the film in Budapest to stand for Paris because we couldn't afford to, because it was a very low budget film. We couldn't afford to be in Paris. 
So I felt that for all these reasons, that black and white would be a, a good choice for the main part of the film. And when it, the film catches up with itself and becomes a present tense 1980s experience for when Beckett's an old man, essentially, with his wife and mistress on the go, it then flips into colour for the final sort of episode, which is in the late 20th century. So that that's sort of the, the, the choices were made for that reason and also allowed us to show Paris looking more like Paris, even though we we're shooting in Budapest with black and white kind of minimalizing some of the, you know, the obviously non-Parisian elements, I guess. And tell me about the about choosing the the proper, the correct young and older Beckett, because that must have been you know, a major task. Well, it was it was actually the reason I made the film was when I read it, I read it during the pandemic, which was when I got the script. And it, that was a very interesting time to be sort of confronted with Beckett again. I've read Beckett as a student, but not much. Um, and so to, to sort of read the script and then start reading the work and seeing some plays online during the pandemic, I really connected with the work better at that point because we were all cut off from each other. And that's one of the conditions that Beckett so often describes in his work. So I thought, well, who can do this? Who can play Beckett or Beckett times two? Because there's two versions of the same Beckett. Well, there are actually four versions of Beckett, just to confuse everyone and not know what the hell I'm talking about. So I thought the, the, the first choice I had was, was Gabriel Byrne. That was the only choice I only thought I ever had about the, was it was Gabriel. So I sort of reached out to him through a mutual friend and we then started talking about it. And he really was really intrigued by the challenge of it. So when Gabriel signed up to join the project, that's when it became viable to me. We both kind of dived in together. And then I, I had to look for the younger version of Beckett because some of the film plays out in his younger life when he's in the French resistance and when he's stabbed and gets involved with various women. Um, and so, again, I was looking around to see who might be the, you know, a good candidate for this. And then I was pointed in the direction of a young actor called Fiona Shea, who'd been in ordinary normal people, I always get this wrong, normal people, the Sally Rooney adaptation, playing sort of the female character's sort of boy, a boyfriend who's really not very nice and very unpleasant. And he's very striking in that. And the thing about Fiona is he's very, he's a really good actor, but he looks just like the Samuel Beckett, you know, young Samuel Beckett. If you see a photograph of Fionn as we've styled him and Beckett, you really can't tell them apart. That was really helpful because Gable doesn't look a lot like the older Samuel Beckett. It's, that's more of an interpretation, but Fionn did. And so when I met him, he was full of it. He really wanted to do it. He knew Beckett quite well. We spent some time together in Ireland, going around Beckett's sort of neighbourhood in Fox Rock, which is outside of Dublin, and sort of steeping ourselves in the world of Samuel Beckett. And so Fionn was was an obvious choice, but a very good choice. And so that that's how that came about, was firstly his talent, and secondly, well, guess what? He looks just like Samuel Beckett as a young man. Brilliant. And speaking of the four Beckett's in the film, um, can you talk about a little bit about the other world? And was that the original plan or did that, was that a touch to make, bring more of the, the sentimental side of him? Well, that's a construct. The film has a construct in it, which where you see Beckett in very late life, uh, meeting an alter ego who's, who's also Samuel Beckett and having an ongoing dialogue with him about his life. And, and basically what they do is they review his life through the lens of his mistakes and the things he's most ashamed of and most guilty about. So that, that's the framework for the film is the two Becketts talking to each other and trying to kind of figure out you know, how shameful should he be? You know, how, how bad was it? So, that, so we dip in and out of this conversation between these two Becketts whilst he, the life story unfolds around that conversation. It, that sounds kind of baroque and quite confusing, but it's quite simple in the film if you go and see it. That's right. I think it's kind of like the conversations we have with among ourselves in our head, right? About the that's that, Well, that's too. exactly right. Exactly how I how we discussed it, that kind of dialogue you have with yourself, you know, with your inner voice. And your inner voice is, can be critical, it can be supportive. Mine is often quite critical, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's the one that torments me. And Beckett's is too. It's kind of like that critical voice in your head made flesh, made real, embodied in, you know, a, a facsimile of yourself, essentially. And what were one of the scenes that you shot that you were really looking forward to when you first read the script? 
Well, I wasn't looking forward to doing those scenes. So they're quite difficult. This is when you have to shoot the same actor twice, you know, and you, so Gabriel played both versions of this Beckett. Um, I kind of enjoyed the scenes between Sandrine Bonner and Gabriel, not going into the script, but as they as I began to start working with Gabriel and Sandrine, I thought this is going to be interesting, and it, so it proved. So those scenes between them, uh, Sandrine Bonner is a very sort of well-known French actress, certainly in France, she's very well-known. And I loved her work and thought she was great. And so I look forward to doing those scenes. This is when Beckett is in later life. He has a mistress and a wife and they both know about each other and it's all very complicated. And his wife is really sort of not very happy with the situation and, and sort of torments him about it. And those scenes were between the two actors were so interesting to shoot because they were both so good. They were both so experienced. They both gave it everything. So I really enjoyed shooting those scenes between Sandrine and Gabriel. And some of the other scenes I enjoyed shooting were the resistance scenes because they were kind of action based and they're kind of more interesting to shoot because you've you got you know things to, to do and stage and stuff. But it was really the work with the actors that I most enjoyed in the film, you know, just working with such good actors and just letting them go basically. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations, James. I very much enjoyed the film and the dialogue and the cinematography.